Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel Tech Bytes with Keshav. Today we will discuss about using Google Library JSON and Pojo classes for passing an API response. Now earlier when we used to have an API response in string format, right? So we used to get, let us say we have a, a key called first name to be, uh, for which we want the value to be extracted. So it should be, it was like a JSON object was there, right? It was passed to JSON object and then dot get not equal to null to check whether first that uh, key is there. Is If there, then we used to check that uh, uh, if it is not null, then get a string, right? And this we used to do for all the key uh, well, uh, keys, the, those for which we want the values to avoid that null pointer exception, right? But now as part of modern code development, we do have this Google provided JSON library and Pojo classes, the combination of which we can use to write a clean and a simplified co a code, right? So if we start with JSON, so JSON is a Java library by Google that will convert and that uh, I would say that can convert Java objects to JSON string called serialization and JSON string back to Java object deserialization right and if we talk about pojo classes pojo classes the uh, it's it is short for plain old java object so i would say these uh, these kind of classes mostly contain the uh, private fields which when uh, parsing will of an api response will happen those uh, will be uh, fields will have will be assigned with a uh, value as per that API response map, mapped values, right? So generally they don't have much uh, functionality, only field declarations. Okay. So now let's deep dive into it to see that the combination of JSON as well as uh, POJO uh, will how uh, that will solve our problem. Okay. I will start with this example. Let us say we have this particular scenario. Sample response. We have emp name, id, department, manager, joining year, familiar languages as a separate sub object. Okay. So now earlier we used to uh, do in traditional uh, uh, if you talk about traditional way, it, it used to be uh, like JSON object was there and then JSON object dot get emp underscore name not equal to null. If it is not equal to null, then check whether that is, uh, it is, uh, we can say that get a string, right? And this we used to do for all these. But uh, now we can do it like as we discussed using JSON library as well as Pojo. So for this, I have created a POJO that will handle the, uh, this data when the parsing will happen, when AP response will be passed. So let's see that. This is a POJO sample. So like I said, it will not, uh, it should, uh, it will not contain any kind of functionality. So basically, we can see that private fields are declared, right? Now. These will be the names that will be used in the coding format, coding part, where we have to respect that, uh, consider camel case. But if we talk about this, here data is not coming in camel case. It is separated by an underscore. So now to satisfy both, what we can do is, from Java perspective, it will be camel case, like this, like this. But if an API response is coming as part of emp name, so we will say for this particular field, it should be API response should have this as a key name. So to satisfy this scenario, we will use this annotation serialized name. This will be only used when this and this will be different. Case different or something like 
uh, yeah and then names are any in any way these these two kind of names are different so see the, this should be what api response uh, has that key name so they should be what we want in that java part right after that we can see that over here also manager is no, uh, no case sensitive and single a uh, word and so for here manager we don't need the serialized annotation right okay now this is fine for one scenario now we can see that this particular object is having one more sub object so we have to create one more class with the name family uh, let's say family language okay i have already created this class now it can have two boolean variables fields we can say is familiar with english is familiar with hindi okay to satisfy java uh, principles for uh, variable declaration camel case has been written here also but for this particular uh, variable key name as part of api response is this so we have mentioned used serialized name now another thing to highlight over here is that we should prefer to use non primitive types over here instead of primitive type why because if we will uh, use instead of this non primitive if we will use boolean and then if let us say as part of the api response is familiar with english is not there yes no is a separate scenario is not there key is not there then as per this no, uh, primitive type false will be default value will be assigned to this and then the end user will consider this as a false that is a uh, but the actual response was null means when there is no value it means signifies null so we should use non primitive values same go goes for that also integer also we can say that uh, if it is like uh, starting with if we uh, want to have some integer we could we should we can use that uh, capital i integer instead of writing it with small that int so that default zero is not assigned when there is uh, key is not present so i would say this is a must we should uh, keep these small things in mind else default values will be assigned with primitive and which is which should be not desirable because missing values assigned with default values okay now this all is has been passed so if we talk about this now first of all i have declared this what we was talking about gcl library right so as part of pom you would find it like this this is the dependency that i added right and over here it is like json i declared as a state static field because it uh, yeah public static and then that's constants file file right and this is a uh, thread safe so yes so now over here how the parsing happened using the combination of both it is at line number 44 okay so it is like we have this json we declared in constants so now this is the api response in string format right this is the pojo class that we have defined so if i close other files so this pojo we defined we want using google library json 
पास दिस स्ट्रिंग ए पी रिस्पॉन्स विच इज इन स्ट्रिंग वे एंड वो जो क्लास शुड बी इम्प्लॉय राइट हेयर वी हैव टू बी केयरफुल लाइक वी हैव वेदर वी हैव टू यूज फ्रॉम जेसन और टू जेसन सो हेयर वी विल बी यूजिंग फ्रॉम जेसन बिकॉज वी वॉन्ट टू डी सीरलाइज द डेटा राइट now it has now, this will simple this piece of code will deserialize no nothing not equal to null, uh, null get as string get as integer something like that all that code went away with sim by creating this simple and simplified approach of pojo and json right so now if you talk about this with this approach also it should be like if i talk oh, okay one second okay ultimately we land landed up at here so let's see this this was a pojo we used right so whether this is this has been populated correctly or not yes 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 but be careful of that using i would say non primitive types where uh, we uh, we want that if the value or key is not present null should be there for this would be like for id id would be there uh, scenario uh, it's a uh, like uh, likely scenario an employee will be having an id right say something other than that any numeric value joining here or something it should be there but some in case some other uh, key that is not valid then it should be like for numeric if primitive used then zero will come over here if it is was uh, not key was there then false will come as a default value if primitive use so so here we should uh, go for non primitive types like capital uh, boolean and then integer instead of int right so so this way we saw how to use json google library json and then pojo classes to convert pass an api response right now another thing we discussed was the, till now what we have discussed is it is called deserialization when we say json dot from right so now we want that we have that pojo class and now we want to make it a json string out of it that will be called as serialization right i will tell you how so over here we have this pojo it is having the required data right past data now over here now i want json string what i did use the same json but instead of now from json i have used to json as i want to serialize it and i want to make it as a json string i pass that pojo to it this is a pojo right pojo class to it now expected response is we can see like this it is a json string now one thing to consider and keep in mind over here is that null if any key is having null value then that will be automatically removed will discard it will not become as part of json string right let's see that for example we have a manager and if we say uh, double quotes that is a, a value right so let's try with null then so we can see over here manager will come as null it is deserialization null value it picked up it got assigned to this but 
as part of this serialization null values something keys having null values will never be part of this we can see manager is not part of this why because it was having value of null right other thing would be Now we have one more scenario. Now let us say uh, we have location over here, right? So location I have mentioned it as okay. Uh, I would say Mumbai. Okay. Now this is coming as part of an API response, but as part of this POJO, we have no way defined mapping for it. We don't have any occurrence of location over here, right? So here as part of this location will never come into picture. We have to consider, uh, keep that thing also in mind, right? So if we see over here. No trace of location. No trace of location. Right? So this we discussed about this point. Now we discuss about this is a uh, uh, POJO we created for a simple, uh, let's say uh, the request is to get a simple uh, one single employee. Right? Now let's say what, what if the request is to get all employees. Then we can create a one more POJO. Let's say we name it as employees. In that, we will now declare a private uh, variable, right? And then we will make it as a type will be list of this POJO employee, right? And then if required, we can uh, uh, initialize also with that array list. And now if that uh, serialized name is will be required over there also then we can pass that also so let us say now uh, we will we can make it like private uh, list of employee this pojo class employee a uh, space employ employees we write right but let's say there is a api response as part of json array it is coming in uh, key name result or value so we can have a serialized name over there right so after that I think that was all for this video I would say tutorial and then yeah was a yeah a sh short tutorial on this using uh, POJO and Google library for writing a say, uh, clean and a simplified code for, as part of API response parsing right so if you like the video you can please uh, like and then yeah if you're new to the channel please do subscribe for more related content on the way thank you for watching